Neanderthals were our closest relatives and have a fascinating history that we are only just now beginning to uncover. However, ever since their initial discovery in the mid-19th century, the species has been surrounded by numerous misconceptions, which in some cases have completely warped the perception of our closest relatives into a negative and more primitive light, and this is something that is not true in the slightest. Neanderthals were just as fascinating as us, and in this video I want to clear up some misconceptions that some of you may or may not still believe. Hope you enjoy! This is one misconception that for most of us in the scientific community is very obviously not true, but for people who don't quite grasp how evolution works, I'll explain it to you. Neanderthals weren't the ancestors of us Homo sapiens, but instead our species evolved alongside the Neanderthals, with both of our species splitting off from Homo erectus around 350,000 years ago. The evolution of us and Neanderthals is not just a linear path which strives towards a predetermined goal. Evolution is more than that. Evolution is more along the lines of a tree, with branches springing out from a base, with some branches falling off and some continuing to grow and diversify, each branch carrying with it its unique story and adaptations. The march of progress, the image you'll see all the time when looking at images of human evolution, falls into this category of a linear and oversimplified view into evolution. This image was based off of the theory of orthogenetic evolution, where scientific minds of the time believe that organisms have an innate tendency to evolve in one definite direction, with each newly evolved organism becoming gradually more advanced as time progresses. This thinking, however, is completely flawed, as I mentioned prior. Life in the past was just as advanced and as complex as our modern world, and to assume that all of these long dead organisms are inferior to us is just plain wrong. Evolution is much more complex than this image would lead you to believe, and it is something that needs to be out of focus for us as a species to grasp what evolution truly is. As Stephen Gold once said, life is a copiously branching bush, continually pruned by the grim reaper of extinction, not a ladder of predictable progress. One prevalent myth about Neanderthals and their life appearance is that Neanderthals would have had to have possessed thick hair to survive in their freezing northern habitat, but this is certainly far from the truth. Despite Neanderthals being on average stronger and stockier than modern humans, they more than likely didn't possess vast amounts of hair as commonly thought. Large amounts of integument, in this case hair, isn't the only thing required for living in a colder climate. By looking at modern animals that live in colder climates today, or even during the time of the Neanderthals like mammoths, possessed thicker levels of fat compared to other elephant species, something that alongside with their thick hair, allow them to survive all across Eurasia during the Pleistocene. Neanderthals, on the other hand, due to their close relation to humans, as well as a complete lack of evidence, more than likely did not possess such fat levels, with recent evidence, it is evident that Neanderthals wore simple, cape-like clothing, whilst archaic humans that arrived into Europe wore more complex styles of clothing with stitching and needles, likely already being in place by the time our ancestors arrived in Europe. And, whilst modern humans had more sophisticated clothes and tools, Neanderthals were not dumb brutes because of this, more on that later, and there is no reason to believe that they were less sophisticated than us simply by which method their clothing was created by. Not to mention, if Neanderthals really did have large amounts of hair, this excess hair would have resulted in an overproduction of sweat, which, in the cold conditions of Pleistocene Europe, would have frozen on the, on the Neanderthals, potentially leading to the death of an individual. This is one misconception that is among the most widespread when it comes to Neanderthal life reconstructions. In the early days of Neanderthal discovery, the then prevalent notion of Neanderthals being brutish, hunched over ape men, was reinforced with the discovery of a Neanderthal specimen, which was given the name La Chapelle Orc Saints I, or as it is simply known, the Old Man, which seemed to further reinforce the preconceived thoughts of early anthropologists. The specimen was in bad health, and such, the initial reconstruction of the specimen was that of an individual with a thrust forward skull, a spine without curvature, as it was bent hips and a divergent big toe. 
This find being among the best preserved Neanderthals of the time heavily influenced the now common interpretation of Neanderthals being primitive creatures, but there was a problem. The discoverers A and J Boisoni and L. Barden were completely wrong in how they hypothesized Neanderthals to look. The old man was fittingly old, being an estimated 40 years old at the time of his death, the equivalent to an 80 year old in terms of a modern equivalent. He was in bad health, with the Neanderthal having lost most, if not all, of his teeth, as well as suffering from an advanced case of arthritis. This is what made the old man hunched over, and this bad posture was figured out later in 1957 to be advanced arthritis, unbeknownst to Boll, the discoverer of the specimen. With the relatively fragmentary nature of the fossil likely being the cause of Boll's errors. Unfortunately, this image of hunched over Neanderthals has continued to this day in pop culture depictions and is likely to remain that way for some time. This misconception is arguably the most widespread when it comes to Neanderthals, and that is that Neanderthals were brutish, unfeeling subhumans that were unintelligent and thus inferior to us. However, this is most definitely not the case. Neanderthals were not the brutish animals they have been portrayed as throughout the years, quite the contrary in fact. From the vast amount of evidence we have found of Neanderthal remains, it is evident that Neanderthals not only cared for their old and sick, but also possessed cognitive abilities that were remarkably similar to our own. There is in fact evidence to suggest that Neanderthals were not unfeeling towards their own kind, and that they treated each other with the same level of compassion that we treat our own families. The Neanderthal specimen known as Shanada 1, otherwise known as Nandi by his discoverers, showed that he was not exactly in the best of conditions by the time of his death. Nandi was between 40 through 50 years at the time of his death, making him remarkably old for his kind, but he didn't reach this age easily. At an unknown time in his life, Nandi had suffered a violent blow to the left side of his head, which, whilst it is unknown how this strike was inflicted, this blow created a crushing fracture to Nandi's left orbit, likely leaving him completely blind in his left eye. Not to mention, analysis has revealed that Nandi likely suffered from profound hearing loss, as his left ear canal was partially blocked and his right ear canal was completely blocked by bone growth, essentially forming bone over his right ear canal which would have been exceptionally painful for him in life. He also suffered from a withered right arm which had been fractured in numerous places, losing him the use of his lower arm and hand. This is thought to either be congenital, a result of childhood diseases, or even from an amputation at some point later in life. This injury would have likely caused paralysis down the right side of his body, which would have led to eventual deformities in his lower legs and foot, which would have left him with a pronounced, painful limp. But even with all of these terrible injuries and deformities that would have made his life a misery, Nandi lasted surprisingly long for an individual with such pronounced physical defects, and this is all due from Neanderthal companionship. For all of the evidence we have accumulated, all of Nandi's injuries were acquired long before his death, showing extensive healing in damaged areas. Nandi is the prime case for Neanderthals looking after their sick and aged showing that Neanderthals clearly expressed group concern when it came to their weaker members. Nandi isn't even the only Neanderthal at this site, or in the entire archaeological record who displays both trauma and healing, and it goes to show that Neanderthal compassion was clearly widespread across their species, and that Nandi's case was most definitely not just a one-time thing. Not only this, evidence has piled up that Neanderthals also had an affinity for the arts, that which includes cave painting. A study published earlier in 2018 revealed that cave paintings from three different sites in Spain were not only made 64,000 years ago, but that Neanderthals must have certainly created them. Not only are these currently the oldest paintings ever found in the world, their date of creation predates the arrival of modern humans in Europe by at least 20,000 years, highly suggesting that Neanderthals made this selection of art. The cave art itself comprises of mainly red and black paintings that includes representations of animals, geometric shapes, and handprints alongside many others. This goes to show that Neanderthals possessed a much deeper 
and sophisticated culture than we could have ever imagined prior, and it gives us a hint into times long past. The grunting sounds that are now associated with our relatives are most definitely a case of our misjudgement on how we view our cousins. Neanderthals, like us, most definitely had some form of language, and while still being unknown to us, they could definitely engage in complex conversation and come up with plans just like we do today. It was long believed that Neanderthals simply lacked the necessary cognitive capacity and vocal hardware for speech and language, rendering them incapable of little more than a series of grunts. Recent studies, however, through three-dimensional x-rays of a Neanderthal hyoid bone, have revealed that Neanderthals possessed a hyoid bone that was practically identical to that of us Homo sapiens, meaning that language and complex communication was not implausible at all for them. Hypotheses about how they might have sounded in life become more prevalent over the years. Analysis of Neanderthal throats reveal that their throats were more squat than ours, and with the dimensions of a Neanderthal's chest and skull taken into account, it is fair to conclude that Neanderthals would have made very interesting, high-pitched sounds, and while unusual, would not exactly be too alien to us. While this theory is yet to be subtly proven as of yet, the study of how Neanderthals may have sounded is continually fascinating to this very day. All said and done, the menagerie of misconceptions based around Neanderthals are well and truly false, and their existence continues to plague the modern view of our close cousins in an unfair light, and that is something that needs to be fixed and restored if we as a species are to truly appreciate Neanderthals for what they really are.